I love it here. I, I, was, I came here from Southern California. Uh, I first came to Cabo in the 70s. It was beautiful. It was where you had mountains, you had water, you had desert, and the light here is magnificent year round. For a painter, for an artist, it, it was the place to be. And we've been here now 27 years. Unbelievable. I came here to paint for myself, but had the opportunity to represent a few other people, so I took that opportunity. I needed a gallery manager, and uh, he came in, my wife met him. And then she said, do you speak English? I remember saying, yes, I didn't. I understood, I was able to read, but I didn't speak English. So <laughs> yeah, then no, I met I Michael, and it, it was a tough first year, because I didn't speak English. And we, my God, we've worked together now over 20 years. But I really love the gallery. I love to be surrounded by the artists, love to be surrounded by art. I mean, I just love it. When he first started managing, he did some favors for me, and I said, God, how can I, I want to pay you for that? And he said, no, 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 no. Finally, he said, well, give me some drawing classes, some drawing lessons. And I said, but you've got to be serious because I'm not messing around. One day, about six months, we were drawing together. And one day, I just watched him and it was, it happened, man. Within a few years, Eric became my top selling artist. He's really famous for uh, more of this, it's almost like it's, narrative, it's, it's Baja art, it's, it, it was originally like cowboys and, and uh, the rancheros and, and a great, great feeling uh, with, with, with cows and he's famous, famous for it. I've been painting cows for a long time, so some people know me as the cow painter, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I always say, oh, another cow painting, another cow painting, this is going to be my last cow painting. But then I see them on the fields or on the side of the road and I'm just so attracted by the light, you know, and it's like, cows will fall on me. <laughs> I call these pieces like uh, the candy pieces for me because they're sweet and there's usually people that I see every day in town just doing every other day things. And that always brings me a lot of joy just to capture those little moments of town, the town where we live. As I was working in it, I remember I was talking to my son about the universe and space and everything. So this started to change the meaning. So the, nam the name of the painting is that uh, Gumball Galaxy. And I was explaining him how big the universe is, you know, where the Earth is and the planets and everything. So really the, the machine, the Gumball machines are like a spaceship. It was fun. So yeah. as you can see, this is very different from cows and everything, but I always feel that Sometimes that I need to change and do something different, and I always end up learning. But then his last show, he's grown so much, was more of a surreal feeling, like in this piece here. That one is the Pond of Dreams. The Pond of Dreams. So you can see that he works in like all styles, all medium. These start as almost like when you're scribbling while you're, you're talking on the phone with somebody and you have a notepad. I just started with an idea, I started with a thought, I started with a feeling, and I just start sketching there. It doesn't matter where it's going to take me, I don't even know where it's going to take me. And then at one point I stop and I look back. Sometimes I don't know what it means until later. And I want to leave it just like that because then that way I want people to interact with the piece. When I first came here too, I did a lot of uh, mostly figurative. But then one day I, I was in La Paz and saw this, this thunderstorm happening over the water. I went, oh my God, and with the palms and everything. And I started doing big, big, big landscapes. Well, for the last quite a few years I've been, ended up doing a lot of big landscapes. This is a very serene cloudscape over the Pacific. I mean, so I think we both are pretty broad in terms of what we paint. I was doing, getting ready to do a show for uh, Viceroy, and um, I wanted a really different look at everything. So what I did was I got burlap. The whole purpose of the show for me was I didn't want to overdo anything. I wanted to, the structure to show. I wanted the, the pencil marks to show. To me, the most important part of an artist is their drawings and how they work in, in, in drawings. The title of this is When There Was Time. Remember when you were kids and you looked over the levee, the wall, and, and you played around and waited in a creek? So that's what I wanted to come through. 
I, in the, during the, the quarantine and pandemic, I've done tons of big, big sketches, charcoal, um, also a lot of uh, sidewalk chalk and, and those kinds of things. But I don't want it to look finished. The title of this is Waiting. It's a, a surfer waiting for a wave, that, that patient moment, that moment where you're inside yourself. And when I first started sketching this, when I first started getting these pencil lines, I thought, I have to show those pencil lines. That's the gesture. That's pretty much, for me, what, make, uh, what made it happen. I originally wanted to be a sculptor, and I've been working with an amazing, an amazing ceramist. And his name is Ruben Reyes. This is terracotta, uh, a torso in terracotta, and this is adobe, polished adobe brick. Look, at, it looks like pounded copper. This is Ruben Reyes also. This is Raku fired. We're going to do a collaboration with him in the future. Uh, one of my most favorite uh, abstract painters, Anibal Angulo, and this is his most recent work. I've shown him for 27 years, and he never ceases to amaze me. Emanuela Gardner, her latest abstract paintings, her studios are here also. This wonderful glass uh, artist, Kate Thomason, her most recent piece, the title is Current, and uh, what I love about this is the, the, the glass and everything, she laughed and said, that's a Topo Chico bottle, which I think is wonderful, but this has such great flow and movement to it. This is a, a, a Toto Santos artist. His name is Peter Holden. Uh, and I, I love this piece because it's done on paper from Nepal, okay? It's a really heavy, thick woven paper, and it's done with oil. This is Peter Ambrose, his most recent drawings. He's a modernist, you can tell by his drawings. He's a, uh, also an amazing sculptor. This piece is lead laminate, which gives it that great feel. It's almost like steel that's been in the frost for a while in the morning. You get kind of that icy feeling to it. He's wonderful. We're lucky to have him down here. Peter Cole's most recent pieces. These were done in the mangroves. And these are the beach workers in La Paz that clean the beaches. And you'll see a wheelbarrow, brooms, and guys talking on the beach. And this piece is a piece by Anne Hebebrand, whose studios are also here in Toto Santos. And she gives great workshops. If anybody ever wants to do uh, a workshop with oil and cold press, I mean, she's the one to do it with. This artist's name is Francois Paris. And I always laugh and say, yes, I think he's French. He did a series, his most recent series is really whimsical. All these different uh, figures running through a canvas. He works large scale uh, most of the time. And he's one of these artists that, that paints it on the floor. Toro Santos is very diverse and I always get this rush of meeting new people from all over the place, all over the place, and and always get to learn from different artists, always get to learn from writers, you know, from painters, from musicians, so that constant influx of talented people is what I value the most. It's a place for writers, it's a place for creative people to be. That's what's so exciting, and that's what, when, I, when my restaurants open, what I love about the restaurant. It's almost like uh, the restaurant ends up being almost like an art club because the writers are here, painters are here, sculptors are here. So you do have that really great community feeling. You don't get that in LA very often. Uh, but after all these years living here, I love it. It's a great place to be.